There was a study that came out and uh, published in Mental Health Today, uh, which described the five personality types and widely agreed upon by um, modern psychology. And those personality types are emotional stability. That's one. Extroversion. Conscientiousness. Agreeableness. And openness. And the study was on who got hit the hardest during this lockdown. And it turned out the people who got hit the hardest were the people whose primary personality trait was extroversion, extroverts, they like to be with people, and people who are open, who are adventurous. And the people who seemed to get along, handle it the best, were the personality type of agreeableness. And so I'm going to just talk about description of agreeableness because, of course, we're all agreeable all the time. No, it's a spectrum. Sometimes we're agreeable. Sometimes we're high on the fussy factor and sometimes <laughs> devoid of agreeableness. But certainly meditation helps. So here is a feature on one of the five widely agreed upon personality types. Agreeableness is a personality that can be described as cooperative, polite, kind, and friendly. These people are more trusting, affectionate, altruistic, and generally describe more pro-social behaviors than others. These people, uh, particularly empathy, showing great concern for the welfare of others. They are the first to help those in need. They're less me-centric and more we-centric. They look for the common good in others, are quick to hear out the opinions of others or people around them, and look for harmony instead of discord. <laughs> Sounds like a superhero. How do I know if I'm high in agreeableness? The agreeable don't insult others, nor do they question a person's motives or intentions. They also don't think that they're better than others. Everyone is their equal, and they are quick to empathize and respect others. Question is, how does a disagreeable person act? They're uh, less amenable and more combative, more inclined to being manipulative, callous, aggressive, and competitive. Turns out that being agreeable matters. And remember, again, spectrum. Sometimes we're high this way, sometimes not so much. When we're high in agreeableness, we seem to be happier, more satisfied with life. Uh, we complain less. We don't belittle others. We don't cause trouble or conflict. We also don't tend towards perfectionism. We're less rigid. Um, we prefer harmony. The question is, is agreeableness genetic? And the answer is, this trait is influenced by genetics to agree, but nurture does have an impact as well. The trait of agreeableness is malleable. And here's a good one. People do become more agreeable over time. Older people are generally more likely to go with the flow in life. Agreeableness is an obvious advantage for building teams and maintaining harmony uh, on the work floor. They're more likable than disagreeable people. However, if you are a scientist, a critic or a soldier, agreeableness, high in agreeableness, not to your advantage when you're looking on the personality traits, not so much. And finally, there's a downside to being too agreeable. Highly agreeable people tend to be people pleasers, often sacrificing their own interests and needs in the interest of helping, supporting, or caring for others. And the advice is of those five qualities. Emotional stability, extroversion, conscientiousness, and openness, along with agreeableness. When an agreeable person is coupled with focus, self-discipline, and a tendency to set and achieve goals, which is conscientiousness, when agreeableness is combined with conscientiousness, that's a wonderful, complete protein of personality types. I have a poem 
by Danusha Lameris, L-A-M-E-R-I-S, called Small Kindnesses. Reminded me of our talk on agreeableness. I have been thinking about the way when you walk down a crowded aisle, people pull in their legs to let you by. Or how strangers still say, bless you, when someone sneezes. A leftover from the bubonic plague. Don't die, we are saying. And sometimes when you spill lemons from your grocery bag, someone else will help you pick them up. Mostly, we don't want to harm each other. We want to be handed our cup of coffee hot and to say thank you to the person handing it, to smile at them and for them to smile back, for the waitress to call us honey when she sets down the bowl of clam chowder, and for the driver in the red pickup truck to let us pass. We have so little of each other now, so far from tribe and fire, only these brief moments of exchange. What if they are the true dwellings of the holy, these fleeting temples we make together when we say, here, have my seat. Go ahead, you first. I like your hat. That was Danusha Lamiris, L-A-M-E-R-I-S. Small kindnesses, thank you very much for joining, for your big kindness, and we'll connect again soon.